So with that, the vendor part is done. I'd like to introduce Mark Rubel. He is the Executive Director of Application Development at GE Capital and will tell us more about his project and how it worked for him today. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. What I'm going to share with you over the next 30 minutes or so is our journey of taking that COBOL IDMS application, running on the mainframe, converting it to COBOL running with Oracle on Unix, and not changing that user interface. I want to start off, I want to talk a little bit about what GE Capital is. We are one of the world's largest providers of credit. 2010, we had a net income of $3.3 billion with an asset book of almost $600 billion. We operate in 50 plus countries, uh, and we have over 100 million customers. Our business is broken down into two segments, the consumer segment and the commercial segment. The consumer segment provides credit to us as consumers through credit cards or uh, loans, home loans, mortgages, etc. The commercial side of the business, which is where my organization lives, really focuses more on providing capital to companies through either leases or restructuring uh, or real estate. To further set the stage here, I want to talk about the PMS suite of applications. And no, I had absolutely nothing to do with naming it. <coughs> uh, PMS was built in 1987. It was built in-house by GE Capital. It started out as a uh, 20,000 account schedule system, no interfaces, domestic only, um, very, very small. Today, it has four highly customized versions of that system run, that run both our direct and our indirect business, uh, both in the U.S. and globally. It currently has 5 million account schedules in it. It has 382 interfaces. It has 1,700 concurrent users. It processes 3.5 million transactions per day. And the system and suite of applications has 71 million lines of code in it. The reason I highlight this, this is not a small application. We didn't rehost our you know, dining reservation system. This is the sun in the universe of the GE Capital Leasing business. This is a system that if it goes down, we are out of business at a very expensive cost. Okay? We took a big risk here, um, and it took a lot of convincing of senior leadership to do that, um, but in the end, you'll see we were successful in doing it. Before we go into the project, any questions on where we, are, where we were before the project on the mainframe? Uh, it's about a 900 MIP system. Somebody else? Okay. So, why did we rehost this thing? Yes. Oh, you had another question? Sorry. Yeah. What was the main driver for this <laughs> Thank you for the segue. <laughs> I have to buy you a drink later. Uh, so why did we rehost? Why did we go down this path? So the first one, as any of you that have mainframe applications know, the annual run costs are expensive. Some would consider them outrageous. Uh, it's an expensive system to run. Technology skill set risk. It's becoming more increasingly difficult to find people that have COBOL, IDMS, whatever your mainframe skill set is, let alone who want to continue working in that technology. Right? It's, you know, the kids coming out of school don't want to know about COBOL. It's just not attractive from an from a employee standpoint. Although our disaster recovery and high availability was acceptable to the business, there was clearly room for improvement, so we wanted to take advantage of that. <laughs> the motto when I joined this organization was, don't delete anything. We might need it again. And they took that to heart. Nothing was deleted. <laughs> Uh, and you'll, you'll see that later in the presentation. The rate of change is increasing, not only for GE Capital, but for the financial services space in general. Right? All the new regulations and, and government banking rules and stuff that have to be changed, it, we're constantly changing. However, we're on the mainframe. It's not fast. It's not efficient. I can't change as fast as we need to. And that was another reason. How do we, how do we get the, the rate of change increased? Remember those 382 interfaces I talked about? Not one of them is on the mainframe, on IDMS, or written in COBOL. So their ability to innovate is actually hampered by the fact 
that I'm on this flat file database. Uh, you got to go to the mainframe. You got to go through a middleware uh, conversion. You got to go from EPSIDIC to ASCII. And we're slowing down the rest of our business. PMS is the back end of this business. All the people out there servicing you as customers, they're slow because of me. They can't innovate as fast because of PMS. So we want to change that model. So those were the concerns. That's why we wanted to, to do this. Those were the things we were trying to address. When we went to the users and the business leaders with this project, their biggest concern was, and I think Cindy touched on it, don't change my UI. Don't change my usability. Right? We all know if you run mainframe shops, you have users that have been there for 20-something years. They come in in the morning, and as they're pouring their coffee, they're typing their F keys, and they're, they're doing work. Right? They just know how to do it. They don't even have to look at the screen anymore. We didn't want to lose that productivity. And changing the UI and now telling somebody that pushes F keys for 20 years, here's a mouse. I mean, we would have lost a ton of time. So that was key to, uh, to going live with this. And then finally, just a standard GE project uh, guideline for us is uh, we need an ROI of less than two years or we, or we typically don't do the project. Okay? So our choices here were rewrite the thing or convert it and rehost it. And as you can see, all of our concerns would have been addressed by either path we took. However, not changing that UI and doing this in two years and getting the ROI out in two years uh, would not have been achievable rewriting it. So we went down the rehost uh, and conversion path. We started to, and we got to a certain number, and we said we can stop. And it was just outrageous. And again, the users want their green screens. Right? And uh, that, was, that was difficult to do. Okay. All right. So at Dale's request, I actually wanted to talk about the word rehosting, because we called our project PMS rehosting. And I don't think the modernization industry calls what we did rehosting. That's part of what we did. We did a conversion and then we rehosted. And so I just want to make sure that as I go through this, it just kind of rolls out of my mouth that it's rehosting. I'm talking about conversion and rehosting when I say that. So I just wanted to make that clear. So this is a high level overview of the project. Um, we have uh, our mainframe application, our IDMS, our ads online. A terrorist came in and did an assessment with their DB shuttle tool that basically inventoried everything we had and came up with, really it let us set the groundwork and, and the game plan for how we were going to do this. After the assessment was complete, uh, Atari started to work on the database. Everything is driven from the database in this process. So they created our new Oracle DDLs. There were eight of them. They created the IDMS extract and load programs. These are the programs that we're going to run on the mainframe, pulls the data out and translates it and allows us to load it back into the Oracle database. Once we had that, they handed that off to my team internally in GE. We created the databases, we installed the uh, DDLs, and we started loading data. While we were doing that, Ateris was busy converting the front end of the application. They took our CICS, our, 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 sorry, our DC COBOL, and our ADZO screens, dialogues, and made them into BS maps. Once they were done with that conversion, they handed that off to the TMAXsoft folks who then converted it or translated it and rehosted it within the Unix environment within their open frame product. Okay. So again, just a high level overview. I'm going to go into every one of those phases um, in nauseating detail. So. <laughs> Any questions before I, before I move on? Okay. So we're going to really jump into the project here. Um, we had six phases. You'll see on the next couple slides that timeline across the top. That was our project timeline. Um, not all of that timeline was actually spent working on the project. Other priorities did creep in along the way. Um, so uh, it really didn't take us two years of work. It took two years elapsed. But the, uh, the time frame I'm talking about on that timeline will move with the, and be indicated by the red arrow so you kind of have an idea of where things were in the process. So we had six phases, not much different than any other normal IT project. Right? We did a proof of concept. We did that assessment I talked about. We did a pilot. We did our build, our tests, and our deploy. Okay. So phase one, proof of concept. Right? TMAX Soft came to us and said, we can take your mainframe app and put it on Unix. And we said, yeah, OK. <laughs> well, so we wanted to really see this work. Right? We, we didn't, I didn't want to see the brochures and you know, wishware and show me that you can actually do this. Um, so we wanted to prove out the technology, see it in action. 
Um, we spent a very little amount of time, little amount of money. We did, uh, we did this project within a month. We converted a small amount of code. I think we did two database records or five database records. And then really we wanted to see what, that, what is that compile and promote process in the OpenFrame product. Do I need to retrain my entire staff? Right, to be able to support this application. And what we found from the proof of concept is that the code was structured and well-formed, which allowed us to believe that it was easily supportable and maintainable. Um, the IDMS database converted as we expected. There were no surprises there. Uh, the compilation process seemed very straightforward, and, and uh, we weren't really concerned about that. The one thing we did learn is there were some tool sets that, that my staff used, um, like an add C compiler, not available anymore on Unix. So there were some tools that we had to replace those with, uh, and that did require some uh, retraining of my staff. Not in the application, which was the critical part that we didn't want to change, but in the tool sets used to support the application. Okay. Obviously, we were successful with the pilot, um, so, or the proof of concept, sorry. And we moved on to the assessment. And again, what this assessment is, the terrorist comes in, they use their DB shuttle tool set, they basically inventory and do a full analysis of all of the applications that, we're, that we are converting and rehosting to really understand the complexities within and, and what the makeup is and uh, what the timeline is going to be, et cetera, and really formulate a plan. And I got to be honest with you, I said, why am I paying you to figure out what my application does? I know what my application does. Just ask. <laughs> Wrong. Not even close. We got three major benefits out of this assessment. The first one, reduce scope. Remember that? Don't delete anything. We eliminated a ton of components that are no longer used to the tune of 78%. 71 million lines of code sitting on our mainframe, and we use 16 million. Insane. Absolutely insane. Huge reduction. The second benefit was we were able to make more informed decisions. Right? My app is COBOL, it's IDMS, it's ADZO, and there's some Rex and EasyTreat in there. Wrong. This is an example of one of the hundreds of reports you get coming out of the assessment that a terrorist does. And you can see all the different technologies that we found hiding in our system. Most of which probably weren't used anymore. They were in that other 60-something million lines of code. But we found 27 different code syntaxes, right? Because we really know our system. Those people retired a long time ago. <laughs> Technical plans. We were now able to identify a strategy around the uniqueness that makes PMS PMS versus somebody else's leasing system. Um, the Terrace and TMAXsoft, they do these conversions, but as you can imagine, every one of us and every one of our applications are coded differently with different standards. They act differently. Everybody's got their little gotchas hiding in the closet somewhere. So this process really kind of identified those, brought them to the forefront, so we could assemble plans and a strategy to attack each one of them before we got to, oh my god, this doesn't work. Okay. This is the list of what the terrorist calls areas of concentration. These are the things that we found that made us unique. Um, some of them were big, some of them were very small. Every one of them was resolved. Um, but we identified 22 of these things that needed to be addressed before we could move forward, or at least have a plan to address. So my skepticism, why am I paying for this? Probably one of the best things we did in this project. I think this project would have, I won't say it would have failed, but it would have been a lot more difficult had we, in, had we discovered down the road that we converted all this code we didn't need. We found these languages that nobody knows anymore. Um, so it was, it was critical information, reduced the cost, reduced the scope of this project greatly. Okay. Any questions on the assessment before I go on?